What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader and I have not shown you guys any recent CGC graded comic books that I've added to my collection in a while. And I, I think the last time I did one of these was back in December, maybe early January, when I picked up one of my Grail of Grails, The Clone Wars number one, which I am going to re-show you guys here in a little bit when I get to some of these other books. But I have decided that now's a pretty good time to be picking up key issue comics with the market down in general. And as you can tell, I'm filming this with kind of a wide angle lens because I find it impossible to film these books because there's there's just such a, a large area and the acrylic cases reflect a lot. So I've got low light environment and I also went with a wide angle lens. So if you hate this kind of format, let me know and I won't do it again. But I wanted to show you guys some books. Some of them are Star Wars books, some of them are not, but I've got some really big books that I've added over, over the last four months to my collection. And I also, before I dig in any further, before I forget, I need to say thanks to a lot of you that have purchased items for me uh, either privately or in Rogue Five Toys on Facebook because a lot of these purchases were very, very expensive, including one at the end of this video that is the most expensive item I've ever bought with the exception of the Spanish Toxic Limbs Bosque that I bought uh, last, or maybe two years ago. Uh, so it's the most expensive thing, and, and it's a comic book, and it's a non-Star Wars comic book, believe it or not. But it's one that I've always wanted in my collection. I've coveted it even before I started buying CGC-graded comic books. I've always loved the cover. It's always held a kind of a special place in my heart, and I finally did pull the trigger on it. So uh, stay tuned for the end of the video, because that one is is easily the most expensive item uh, other than my toxic limbs boss it's uh, it's it was a big purchase for me so thanks again to everyone who's bought now uh, the first one we're going to start off with we're gonna we're gonna kind of start low and then go high with some smatterings of of really big key books in between uh, but the first one i wanted to show you is a mandalorian related comic book so on the left hand side on your screen this is the one in ten concept art edition of the mandalorian number one the first full appearance of uh, the Mandalorian, as well as the first cameo appearance of Grogu. And so it's a pretty awesome cover. And again, I'm, I apologize for all the glare. I just have not figured out a great way uh, to show comic, graded comic books on the channel without having massive glare. So that's the 1 in 10 ratio variant. And then, or excuse me, is that 1 in 10? Yeah, the 1 in 10 ratio variant. And then this is the 1 in 50. I don't have the 1 in 25. But this is my favorite of uh, the Mandalorian number 1 covers. And it's one of the tougher ones to find. The U variant cover A. And so I finally, you know, if you guys watch my comic book market updates, you know that I've been wanting issue number two, and I finally did pick that up. So this is the Mandalorian number two. This is the one in 50 Chung variant cover, and uh, easily my favorite cover for issue uh, number two. And uh, being the one in 50, I figured that, you know, th this is the one I've, I've wanted. And as you guys know, this has been on, on a little bit of a price decline slowly. Uh, you know, when I first kind of started covering this book, it was selling for as much as $300 for a CGC 9.8. And then it dropped down to $275. And then it dropped down to $250. And then it dropped down to $225. And then it hit $200. And I said, if it gets under $200, I'm going to get one. And one did sell maybe a month or two ago for $166 plus shipping. And uh, it, was an, it was kind of an offer from the seller. And I didn't get to it in time. It sold. Well, anyway, a seller on eBay had like eight of these, and uh, I think a number of you did pull the trigger on it. I sent you guys the link saying, hey, this is a pretty good buy. Uh, he had them listed for $200, uh, and he, I got an offer from the seller for, for $175. So it was $175 plus shipping. I think all in, it was about $192, I think is what I paid for it. And I, I would wager that if you're even more patient, you, I bet you'll be able to get it for 150 bucks. not too long. It seems to be on the decline, as most comic books are. But I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger while I had enough money to get it. And it's just an awesome, awesome cover. I really love that. Uh, obviously, this is during that battle with the mud, mud horn or whatever that, that, that creature was. And uh, pretty awesome 1 in 50 ratio variant. So let me put these away, and then we'll talk about a couple of non-Star Wars books that I recently added. Next up, all by herself, is Harley Quinn. This is Batman Adventures Mad Love. This is a one-shot 
that came out in 1994. So fairly early comic book. Now her first appearance comic is Batman Adventures number 12, which I, I, I don't remember the year. It was, it was in the mid, mid 1980s. That's her first appearance comic for Harley Quinn. Uh, she is a very expensive first appearance comic. Uh, if, if that's one you want, it's probably going for between 2,500 and $3,000. So the next best option I, I think is, is one of the next best options is this one. And that's Batman Adventures Mad Love. It's a great looking book. It's one I've always wanted in the collection, even though it doesn't really necessarily fit with the rest of my collection. Uh, but I love Bruce Tim. Uh, he's the cover artist. Uh, there's a lot of books that he has that I've always wanted, but this was easily the one I wanted the most. And uh, it's just a fantastic cover. And uh, it shows kind of her in love with the Joker. Uh, he's got kind of the Batman Adventures cartoon style to the art. It's got piranhas going at at Batman. And what I love about it is that the gun she's holding has a cork inside with a little string. So, you know, she's not really dangerous. Uh, and this is a, an important book because this is the origin of Harley Quinn uh, out of DC continuity. So I apologize that it's not focusing that great, but uh, this is out of continuity. So this is not as part of the kind of continuing DC Comics continuity, uh, her origin story. Now there is another one called uh, Batman Harley Quinn that uh, is in continuity, the origin, and it's, I believe it's also the second appearance of Harley Quinn in comic books. It's a very creepy cover, and uh, that one goes for a little bit more money than this one, uh, but that's one I'd like to pick up as well, and uh, it, that one seems to be what collectors uh, gravitate towards versus this one. But I, I, I really like this book, and it's just one I've always wanted, and the price was right in an auction. And what I like about the back is his face at Harl. You're a certified nutso, wanted by the law in two dozen states, and hopelessly in love with a murderous, psychotic clown. So it's, everything about the book is just cool, and I do love me some Batman, and uh, it's nice to get kind of her or, her origin and uh, and you know just just a really nice cover to it. Everything about it just really pops. So very happy to add that one. And uh, now we're going to show you some some really nice books as it relates to Wolverine. Quickly on, on Wolverine before we kind of dig into some other Star Wars books. This is one that's already been in my collection for a while. This is the 1991 release called Marvel Comics Presents issue number 72. And this is kind of the beginning of the origin story for Wolverine. It, it's, it's just a, a very commonly graded book. It's very easy to find. Uh, the price has really come down on it. I bet you could buy this in a 9.8 for $150 to $200, somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, it seems like the market does not like the cover, which I can understand why. It's a little bit much. It's a little bit, uh, what's the right word? excessive with the imagery on this one. But uh, but I wanted to get it because it is kind of the origin of Wolverine as it's labeled uh, right there on the label. Uh, this is a cover by Barry Windsor Smith, who is a pretty well-known artist. But the market has basically said that they don't like, even though this is the first issue related to the origin story for Wolverine, this is not what the market has gravitated towards. And I got a great deal on the one that people seem to focus on, and that is issue number 79. This is a very, very tough book to get in a 9.8. There are only 70 of them on the census. Even though this came out in 1991, uh, there's only 70 CGC 9.8s on the census. And this is kind of the continuing saga related to the origin of Weapon X slash Wolverine. And certainly the cover pops way better. It's it's just a very, very desirable cover. And I've got a great backstory as it relates to this specific book. So uh, if you guys shop on mycomicshop.com, uh, you can look up any book on there. And if they don't have what you're looking for, you can set up a my want list and they will automatically notify you if a book comes up for sale that you want. And you can put the grade in roughly, you know, not, um, near mint plus or whatever. So I had one set up. I've had it set up for many, many months, probably over a year. A search, you know, automatically search set up that if a near mint plus example comes up for Marvel Comics number 79 to please email me. Well, I got lots of emails, but they were all 9.6s. And I was like, nope, that's not what I want. I want a 9.8. Well, uh, finally, one came up, and it was right as another one was ending at auction on Comic Link. And on Comic Link, there was one of these for sale, 
uh, at auction for in a CGC 9.8, and it very quickly went to six hundred and fifty-two dollars. Six fifty-two with like a week to go. And uh, with a week to go, I got the notification from my comic shop that one was available in a CGC 9.8 for half that price, for $350, a little bit more than half. So uh, it was about 4 o'clock in the morning when the notification uh, was received, and I was like, this is not going to last because there's only 70 of them you know, in a CGC 9.8 with white pages, uh, or period, you know, whether the white pages or not. So I went ahead and bought it because there was already one at auction on comic link at six fifty, And, uh, you know, this one does have a little bit of an under wrap, which probably kept the price down a little bit, but I, I do think it was a little bit underpriced, uh, just given how few of them there are on the census. And I, I immediately bought it and I'm glad I did because the other one did end at six fifty plus plus shipping, plus the 3% buyer's premium that you have to pay Comic Link when you win an auction. So, you know, it probably all in, it was probably $725. And it did have a better wrap than this. This was underwrapped, as you can see. This, you know, the, the cover doesn't quite cover all of the pages, and it really shows on the back. So it's an underwrap, and part of the front cover is on the back. And that's what, you know, that was the only negative of it. But I thought for the price difference... It was an absolute slam dunk of a buy, and I'm really happy that I added it because, as I said, one of 70 in the world, yes, please. So I'm going to put this one to the side because as nice as that book is and as hard as that one is to find, I've got a much better Wolverine that I'm going to show you now. And that one is an iconic classic. It's the poor man's, you know, uh, Hulk 181, which is the first appearance of Wolverine in comic books. In a CGC 9.8, that goes for $75,000. So I'm not going to be adding that one to the collection anytime soon, even if I won the lottery. I don't think I'd pay that for a comic book, but uh, it's certainly a, a, an iconic book. But the next one on the list, in my opinion, is this one. And that one is Hulk 340, the Incredible Hulk 340 from 1988. This is uh, a cover that if you collect comic books, you know very well. This is a comic cover by Todd McFarlane. And uh, obviously it shows the Hulk reflecting in the claws of Wolverine. And this one has been homage to death. I mean, if you spawn to, to just about every different comic out there or, or series out there, whether they're superhero related or not, everyone has copied this style with the reflect, reflection of the enemy uh, with the superhero uh, kind of, you know, shown on, on the, the cover of the book or vice versa. Sometimes it's the enemy with the, with the hero shown in the reflection. But this is where it all started. This is an iconic book by Todd McFarlane. And uh, one I, I, I've, won I've wanted in my collection for a while, but the price was just so high for so long. I mean, you know, for a while there, it was over $2,000. And, I, you know, that's not a price I could pay at least for this book, because there are a lot of them on the census in a CGC 9.8 with white pages. They come up pretty regularly. But because it's such an iconic book, it's got a lot of demand. People want this book in their collection because it, everyone knows it. And uh, this is kind of a blue chip investment piece, if you ask me. Uh, not That's not the reason I bought it, but you know, I, I think 10 years time from now, whatever what I paid for this book uh, will, will look a pretty like a pretty attractive buy uh, in 10 years because uh, this book is just one that that people will always always want and I'm very very happy to add it so uh, you know obviously I got Marvel Comics 72 the beginning of Wolverine's origin I've got uh, Marvel Comics presents number 79 which is an iconic book one of 70 and now I've got Hulk 340 which is an iconic piece and and uh, certainly uh, worthy of the word peace because I, I just absolutely love it. In terms of other Wolverine books I'd like to add, I'd like to add Wolverine Limited Series number one, uh, which is his first ongoing solo series comic. Uh, that's one that's fairly affordable. It's still expensive, but you know, six fifty to seven hundred dollars. But I took care of the big boy. This was the big boy that I really wanted, and I'm super super happy to have it. Uh, let's dig into some more Star Wars comics. Next up, I've got another cover of. The High Republic Adventures Annual Number One. Uh, these were the ones that were already in my collection, and in my opinion, I've talked about this in my comic book market updates. The High Republic Adventures Annual Number One will probably be the book that you want to get. And uh, I had the standard cover A. There is an online exclusive IDW that you can get as well. That's pretty expensive because it was an online exclusive. Very limited in number. They sold out immediately. Uh, that one's pretty pricey. Uh, this is another uh, edition that I've already shown you on the channel. This is the That Dude Books 
edition. And the, the, the reason this book is fairly uh, important is because it has a lot of first appearances from the High Republic universe that I think will long term uh, be the important characters. And notably, it's it's on the cover here. Uh, this is Bel Zetafar and his charhound Ember. And uh, he's going to be kind of, in my opinion, he's probably going to be like the Luke Skywalker of the High Republic era. He's kind of like a young Padawan who's kind of coming into his own coming of age type thing and learning his powers. Uh, this is also the this book is also the first comic full comic book appearance of Indira Stokes, one of the main Jedi, Porter Engel, uh, who's another big Jedi that's very powerful, uh, and it's also the first full appearance of Loden Greatstorm, who uh, does have a role that quickly goes away after the end, end of the first novel. But anyway, it's got five you know I'd say five or six different full first appearances, either cameos or first full appearances. So. Uh, in my opinion, if the High Republic universe kind of comes to live action, Bell Zetafar is absolutely going to be one of the main protagonists. So I've got the sketch edition from That Dude Books, and then i got the color edition. Gorgeous, gorgeous covers. So I'll leave one of those up uh, so we can compare to the one I just got back. And these were actually submissions of my own to CGC. And it was a pretty great story, I guess. Um... But this is a very tough to find Things from Another World edition. These sold out immediately. And the interesting thing is, is that Things from Another World, the comic book distributor, they offered these either raw or in a CG CBCS 9.8. They were not working with CGC. And the CBCS 9.8s all sold out immediately. I could not get one. Uh, I would have I been happy with one if I could have gotten one. But uh, they were all sold out. Uh, immediately. So I got two raw ones and they arrived damaged. They were not in great shape. They were, uh, they had some non color breaking creases along the spine. They were just, I was really, I was really angry because there are so few of them. There are only 700 printed total, uh, for, for this book. And, uh, it's a great cover that also shows Bell Zetafar. That's a little bit less realistic. Um, it, you know, it's more of a cartoon kind of style to it. It's almost like anime style. But uh, the the Charhound Ember, uh, it's just it's, everything about it's fantastic. It's a it's a Virgin cover with no logo on there, similar to the That Dude Books version. Uh, but anyway, so I, the two of them were damaged, but I was hoping that they would be salvaged. So I sent them to a comic book presser. He ended up losing the comics, losing them. And uh, this was in May of last year uh, when I sent these to him for, to be pressed and cleaned. And, uh, and I, so I won't work with this guy again, but he lost them. And he was in the middle of a move to a new location. And he found them. He found them and he sent them back to me. So I sent them in uh, to be graded, even though that they were pressed like many, many months ago. They were pressed and cleaned probably uh, seven to nine months ago. And uh, But they arrived and they looked good. So I sent them in and lo and behold, both of them got the 9.8. So as much of uh, frustrations as I dealt with between getting damaged books from the dis comic book distributor and then having them lost by the comic book presser, they arrived back to me from the presser. I sent them in immediately to CGC. CGC is running really quick right now. They're, they're running about 30 days or less. Uh, I think these arrived in like two and a half weeks. So th they both hit the 9.8 though. So I was really, really surprised and really happy. But they went on an adventure because I bought them, uh, gosh, I would say about 14 months ago. And, uh, and then they got lost. So pretty crazy, but uh, very happy to have two of these because, as I said, uh, there's only 700 printed total, and uh, I'm sure that a lot of people got theirs uh, in bad shape like I did. And uh, luckily, the presser, despite losing my books, he sh certainly saved them. He, he, uh, he salvaged the 9.8 out of them because they were there was they had no business getting a 9.8 in the condition that they arrived in from things from another world. And I, as a side note, I won't buy from them again. They were there was terrible customer service. So my personal opinion is don't buy from them. But uh, that's just me. Uh, so that was. That was a good experience. I got I got lucky with the 9.8s on that one. But now I think it's time to show you one of the holy grails that I recently picked up from the vintage Marvel run of Star Wars comics. So as I alluded to at the beginning of this video, I told you I'd bring out the big guns again. And uh, here they are. Uh, this These are two of my favorite Star Wars books in my collection. And they are absolute heaters with everything that's going on right now on Disney+. Plus. We obviously saw the trailer for Ahsoka. And uh, I've got those... I got them pretty well covered. I've got 
Heir to the Empire number one. This is the direct edition in a CGC 9.8. The first comic book appearance of Mara Jade as well as Grand Admiral Thrawn. Uh, just an awesome, iconic, timeless cover that I added maybe a year and a half ago. And then you guys saw at the end of last year, I added Clone Wars number one, uh, the first appearance of Ahsoka Tano and Captain Rex in comics. So those are two of the biggest comics in my collection. But as you guys know uh, from last year, a book that has eluded me that I finally was able to pick up is this one. And that is Star Wars number 42 from December of 1980, the original uh, Marvel run, and this is the first appearance of Boba Fett in standard size U.S. comics, uh, along with uh, Yoda as well. And uh, this this book is is a timeless cover, and I, I bid on several of them probably over the last year and a half to two years, and I've always lost whether it's Comic Link or eBay or my comic shop or you know a couple of hakes I bid on there, and I always kept losing. And finally, the comic prices have come down enough to where. I, I, you know, it made sense to pull the trigger, and I finally was able to pick up in a CGC 9.8 with white pages the direct edition of Star Wars issue number 42, and it's just an awesome, awesome cover with Boba Fett, Bosk, and Dengar on there, and, you know, there was a UK version of the comic that came out earlier than this book. Uh, that was, a, you know, a larger oversized comic that technically is his first appearance comic, and, but this is the standard size U.S. comic first appearance of Boba Fett as well as uh, the first appearance of Yoda in comics. So pretty amazing book, and uh, I never thought I would actually be able to finally acquire it. But uh, look at this trio. I mean, we got Heir to the Empire number one, Clone Wars number one, and then obviously Star Wars number 42. The next big one on my list... Uh, no, no time soon, by the way, but uh, the next big Star Wars book on my list would probably be Star Wars number 68, which, uh, it, you know, we all know that cover, the yellow cover with a close-up of a Mandalorian. It's the kind of the first time the Mandalorians are mentioned in comics. That one's pretty pricey. There's only about 180 of those in a CGC 9.8 on the census, so that one's actually approaching, if not higher, than what Star Wars number 42 goes for. But uh, if, picking between 68 and 42, there was no question in my mind that the first of those two that I was going to buy was Star Wars issue number 42. So just an awesome, awesome looking book and very happy to finally add that one. Let's finish this video off with a non-Star Wars book that is the second most expensive item I've ever bought for my collection, action figure or comic books. Uh, pretty incredible book that I'm very excited to show you. Finally, before we wrap this video up, I did pick up an amazing Spider-Man key issue. I don't have a lot of Spider-Man books in my collection, but uh, one of my favorites is Amazing Spider-Man number 281 from uh, October of 1986. And the reason I love this book is because growing up, I probably read this book at least 50 times. So I had it in my comic book collection growing up. So I had to get it. And there's not many of these on the census. This is like the formation of a group of evil bad guys called the Sinister Syndicate. Actually, the first appearance of the Sinister Syndicate, I can't talk, was uh, issue number 280, the issue before that. But this is the better cover. And it includes Boomerang, The Beetle, Speed Demon, Rhino, Hydro Man. It also mentions... Up at, up at the top. This one's got it all. The Hobgoblin, Jack-O-Lantern, Silver Sable, the Sandman. So they, they've got all these major bad guys kind of mentioned or shown on the cover. And I just absolutely love the colors on it. So I do have two of them. This is the direct edition. There is also a very rare newsstand with the Mark Jewelers insert. And for those of you who don't know what that means, on the bases for uh, U.S. military... They did receive comics, and inside would be what's called Mark Jewelers inserts, <clears throat> and it was designed for people who were stationed overseas or st stationed on military bases as part of the U.S. military. They could order their wedding rings. They could order their rings or jewelry uh, for their significant other while they're stationed away, and so... Uh, there is a very rare newsstand edition with the barcode, and it's a Mark Jewelers. I, I do not have that one. I think there's less than 10 of those on the census in a 9.8 grade, so I would love to get it. But uh, I do have two of them just because I love this book so much, and they just don't come up very often. But here is the big boy, and we'll wrap this video up. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 238. Uh, this is the first appearance of the Hobgoblin, and uh, this one has what's called 
a tattoos insert. So uh, that's that's why it's really hard to get a true blue label 9.8 for this book uh, because number one, it's the the Hobgoblin and it's a you know fairly older book. This is from March of 1983, but there was a little insert inside for like a skin tattoo that you could rub on uh, your skin. So it has to have that in order to get the 9.8. And um, it's kind of like a free insert, a free sample for kids to try. But it's a pretty iconic cover. What's interesting is that this cover art was by John Romita Sr. and Jr. And so you can see that there in the upper left-hand corner. So father and son created this pretty iconic cover art with the Hobgoblin tearing the Spider-Man's outfit in half, and it's the first appearance of the Hobgoblin. One of the major, uh, you know, other than the Green Goblin, the Hobgoblin, uh, Jack-O-Lantern, you know, obviously there's so many different amazing Sandman, uh, Rhino, there's so, there's so many amazing villains within the Spider-Man universe, and the Hobgoblin is right up there, and this is certainly one of those books that I think will uh, just be uh, an incredible kind of addition to my collection to get it in a CGC 9.8. I didn't look it up <clears throat> on the census as to how many there are. I would guess at least a few hundred just because uh, it's a it's a very desirable and, and very uh, pricey book in a 9.8 grade. So I'm sure that a bunch have been submitted over the years to try and get that coveted 9.8 grade. But it was a pretty incredible pickup. And, uh, you know, I did have to sell quite a number of items to pay for it. But uh, I am paid. I, I did pay for it, so I, I didn't buy this kind of on a whim and and figured out the the money later. I, I saved up and and was able to kind of uh, be disciplined with uh, saving up for it. So it's it's just an incredible uh, key issue Spider Man book. I, you know, it's not nearly as big as like Amazing Spider Man three hundred, which is the first appearance of Venom. Obviously, that's a very pricey book. Uh, there's uh, ASM. 316, I believe it is, which has got a great Venom versus Spider-Man cover. ASM 361, which is the first appearance of Carnage. So there are some other really big key issues, but other than ASM 300, I would put this one on the next rug, uh, rung down, which is ASM 238 in terms of 9.8 grades uh, that are achievable for most of us. Uh, you know, this is this one falls right behind ASM 300 in my in my mind, and uh, very very happy to have it. So, uh, this video is very long. So if you've stuck around all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I did put together, I, I believe, a brief slideshow with some of the books covered, and I will be back soon.